The cool winds of opal blew calmly through the knotgrass as Adder surveyed her domain. Walking through the forest, she took time to note the relative serenity of it all. Past the woodland scrub, she noted the bulky form of a giant tick ambling away in fear. Fish takers nodded as they passed, their blood-soaked catch leaving dotted red trails upon the leaves. The bang of one of the watch hounds suddenly broke the air, but only briefly, most likely sighting the tick as it trundled away. The red goblin blood mists of the lakeside began to thicken as she approached. Sure enough, the rain began to pick up as she arrived. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Thestar Saxul. Crimson Trumpets. Right now, it's the 18th of Opal 247, midwinter of our fifth year here, I believe. Look, I am totally ready to just get down to business right here. It's about damn time, right? We've been jerking around a whole bunch with all kinds of little half-done projects. We've had forgotten beasts. We've had sieges. It's just been a mess, really. Let's just cram straight forward, get right to work. We got a lot to do here still. But first off, something I'd like to mention before we get down to all the interesting bits is that up here in the first cavern layer, we're really trying to open it up a bit. We're making a series of roads just around the area just so we can reach places faster or perhaps funnel forgotten beasts over towards us a little quicker. That's right. We're making it easier for forgotten beasts to come to our fortress just to help maybe like negate that whole water swimming thing they've been doing all the time. That's a bit annoying. You can see over here, we have this nice road leading up to the north. That'll get the job done well enough. Got another road over here on the east, kind of just circling around a bit. Yeah, it should work out pretty well. It's getting there. It's getting there. Down over here this way, you can actually see a new room we're carving out. This is going to be a Crafts Dwarf Guild Hall. We got a bunch of Crafts Dwarves in the fortress now. They want a Guild Hall, so we're making that happen. Ooh, something I forgot about is that our fortress now has a Baron, apparently. It's not the Baron of Crimson Trumpets. They were just elevated to the position recently, and it was completely out of our hands. Apparently, there was a death in the family, and, well, the position just passed on to this guy, Zolban, our Will Breaker. Someone we haven't talked about before, but definitely someone people have noticed. As you can see, Zolban is a fan favorite of our fortress's dogs. As the Will Breaker, he's the one who trains all the animals in the fortress, only dogs for now. But because he did that, they have taken a liking to him. He's our Baron. And as such, he now has new requirements for his quarters. Not satisfied just to sit in that giant communal room anymore. Understandable, I suppose. But, well, his requirements are kind of lofty. He needs an office, quarters, dining room, a tomb. More requirements than Adder, that's for sure. Also, seemingly doesn't want buckets exported for some reason. Ugh, okay. We can make that happen. Gotta get right to that too, I suppose. Don't want to upset the guy too much. For now, we'll just carve out a room like this for him. Nothing too fancy. I hope it's good enough. We'll have to get the walls and floors all smooth out and find a place for his tomb. Ugh, such a pain. We'll get it figured out though. Moving on bit by bit, just down here at the moment, trying to get some more silk from Tagatalon. It's really kind of a fun process when you get used to it. Also, did discover that it's actually much more efficient to just put one soldier down here, not all of them. Because after Tagatalon sprays those webs out, the soldiers are stumbling around in the webs, just kind of ruining them. If you just have one soldier down here, then it, you get a lot more webs out of the deal. We've been turning a lot of this stuff into clothing too, which is just excellent, because recently we've had a lot of rotting clothing issues. Not great for fortress stress, I'll tell you that much. Actually, you can see right down here, we have our, our silk workshops doing very well, producing all kinds of stuff. The finest of silk and loincloths and sandals. Yeah, it's pretty excellent. Hmm. You know, actually just trying out the one warrior deal in here and it doesn't look like that much silk is being sprayed out. Okay. Having more warriors in here produces more silk, but also ruins more silk. So overall, probably having more warriors in here is more efficient. Let's give that a try again. Yeah, I mean, it's undeniably more efficient. It still just doesn't feel like we're getting that that much. Oh, well, not bad. Can't really complain too much, right? We'll take it. Then in other news, right up over here, you can see our siege weapon training room. We've decided to instead go with, instead of ballistas, uh, we're going to go with catapults. It'd be much better. Uh, I mean, catapults use rocks, right? Much more straightforward than ballista bolts. We'll save the ballista bolts for when we actually face down sieges or whatever the hell we're going to fire them at. Yeah, just along all this row right here, we're going to have catapults. And they're just going to be shooting down to the south there. The rocks will fall down below where they can be safely collected. Now, remember, we have all the dwarves in the fortress set to be siege operators and engineers and by my estimate it's going to take at least 
I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. I'm going to say at least two full years to get us to a state where we can competently all use siege weaponry. Assuming we don't have any more migrant waves or anything. And these things are going to have to be going 24-7 after we get this place established, too. So yeah, that's going to take a bit of doing, but it'll be worth it for sure. Baying. Two. Three hounds. Followed by pain de-elping. This was no tick. The demon's forces had returned once again. The fortress sprang to life as the horns were blown, the drums beat. The chants had come once again to prove themselves. Oh ho ho, hey now, here we go. Looks like the goblins are marching on crimson trumpets once more. A vile force of darkness has arrived. And as we can see, well, yeah, this is already a huge siege, I can tell. The sieges are getting bigger, which is to be expected. And it looks like this time they've brought at least, well, it looks like we have a dwarf and a human. Bunch of goblins again. Beak dogs. Probably gonna have trolls coming in at some point, too. Excellent. Well, you know, I guess I should be saying that I'm a little bit nervous or something like that, but I'm really not. I think this is gonna be fine. Gonna turn on a burrow real quick, and this time, I'm actually gonna change up our burrows a bit, redo them. I've got this new burrow set up so that dwarves can do everything underground still. They just can't come up to the surface. We have so much work to do, you know? Can't afford to be sitting around on our laurels while the goblins are here. Okay, and back to our invading friends here. We have about maybe a dozen trolls, a dozen beak dogs, and then fighters? There's a whole bunch. There's a, a real, real lot. Mostly goblins, as to be expected, but they're all armed, armored. Uh, 95 of them, and leading them, we have a lord consort. Stasost Stradnak Zagnam. Pretty interesting we don't have a lord or lady showing up. We just have their spouse both with this siege and that last one. I find it interesting too that this goblin here, this one is armed. He's got a silver flail, but he also has an additional item too, a silver axe butt, which is just a metal bowl that is struck possibly with the flail. Thought that was pretty cool. We'll have to be sure that we take this goblin down. We don't want them coming back in the future. Soon they'll learn not to mess with crimson trumpets. Just not going to be worth their time. Man, I can't wait to get that Colosseum done. That's really going to be something, huh? Now, as you can see, the goblins are just kind of spreading out all over the place. We have trolls, beak dogs, just in a big mess up here. Unfortunately, they are moving around our perimeter right now, taking out our war dogs that we have on patrol, of course. We're not going to want to send the warriors out right now, like with that last siege. We're going to keep them, we're basically going to do, do the same exact thing. I want to keep them down in the fortress, right at the bottom of the entry stairway. And hopefully by the time some of these bastards make their way down, they'll be kind of grouped up around the entrance and we can just head out. Our warriors will be completely surrounded, but it's going to be fine. They'll be just fine. It'll be much safer than like, you know, if they're spread out all over the place and our warriors have to go out and just like hunt down packs of goblins by themselves. This way we can have our small group of warriors fight this giant group of warriors. Just kind of head to head, smash them together. Hopefully that's a plan. We'll see how well that pans out. With forearms as wide as kegs smashing through the underbrush, the shaggy coated trolls cleared the way for their bloodthirsty kin. Beak dogs with beaks clicking and scraping dashed forward, followed by the goblins and their wicked arms. Crimson Trumpet's woodland was alive with the guttural war cries of malevolent forces. They had no idea what they were in for. Having a look down in the fortress, you can see our warriors grouping up. They are prepared for the incoming army. Pretty excited about this, believe it or not. Only thing I'm not too, too excited about is the fact that a lot of our warriors are, um, carrying babies right now. That has me slightly concerned. More concerned than with the Forgotten Beasts. Just because a battle with the goblins is sure to be very chaotic. A baby could very well easily be injured in that fighting. But this is the Crimson Trumpet's way. The first taste of battle in their young lives. Gonna get him started off on the right foot. It'll be good for him down the line, trust me. Having a look up top here, you can see a bunch of trolls. Trolls are headed down now. Okay, excellent. Yeah, here they come. Come on in, you bastards. Yeah, they're getting followed up by the goblins too. And beak dogs, a whole bunch. Yeah, and you can see the warriors headed up right now. Kind of hard to tell what's going on in this hallway exactly. There's an awful lot going on. Dwarven bodies, troll bodies, all clashing together. I imagine they'll be moving up and out of the fortress though before long. Just gonna wait and watch up here. Okay, yeah, here they come. Starting off on some trolls. The dwarves are exiting the fortress to face down an entire goblin army. They appear to be doing pretty all right for themselves right now. Just gotta get them up here. There's one dwarf off by themselves, knocked unconscious. We lost one already. Not excellent. Um, might be the only one we've lost so far. But the dwarves are continuing on their way. Just smashing through the army. Good job, dwarves. Moving our view slightly over towards the bridge. The dwarves are having no problem. They're just ripping straight through these goblins. 
Yeah, we've chased them back to the bridge now. And it looks like a lot of the goblins are trying to retreat now. Just kind of scrambling away. Uh, not, not too sure. We may have lost another one there too. But that looks to be it right there. The siege has been broken. And all in all, we lost two dwarves. That was it. And so we're going to turn off the burrow and get straight back to work. And hopefully get these wounded dwarves down to our hospital. I am seeing two up here that appear to be badly wounded. Hoping they pull through. Goes without saying, I suppose. Ugh, damn it. That's not something I realized. That first dwarf that fell. I thought it was one of our silver hammers, but it wasn't. It was a silver club. The leader of our silver clubs with her adamantine helmet. Yeah, that was Adder right there. That was the, the first one to have fallen in that combat was Adder. Go figure, huh? That's a damn shame right there. Well, she fell in defense of Crimson Trumpets. I can't be too upset about it, really. She's not upset. She died doing exactly what she wanted to do, defending Crimson Trumpets. We'll have to make sure she gets a nice memorial. She's the one who led us here. She's the one who started this whole thing off. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll do something nice. Our thanks to you, Adder. You will be forever remembered. And I guess to that end, what we're gonna do is come down here to her quarters in the first cavern lair and turn her entire bedroom here into a tomb. How's that sound? I think that'll work out pretty well. Just gonna replace her bed with a nice coffin. It should be more than appropriate. It is a damn shame that we lost her like that, huh? I was hopeful she'd be around for a lot longer than that, but not the case. Guess it's just what happens. And so the title of Fort Waker passed on to Mighty Tobol. However, any joy she may have found was utterly expunged by blackened waves of pure vengeance. Eli's forces had landed a blow against her people, and must be forced to pay for their purely suicidal insolence. By the time of their end, the goblins would wonder how a demon came to lead the dwarves of Crimson Trumpets. In other news, it looks like we have ourselves another Fort Waker. One was just elected. Tobal Niles Milbill, Silver Hammer, leader of the Silver Hammers. You may remember that back a while ago. Tobal made a run for fortress leadership. That was actually pretty early on in Crimson Trumpet's life, but she's back once more, voted into the position too. So the dwarves of Crimson Trumpets really want her here. Well, I suppose it'll work out just fine. Tobal, you finally got what you wanted. Just hoping you make a good leader. Truth be told, Adder was our Fort Waker. She was strong, but I'm thinking that Tobal here might be a bit smarter, frankly. Seems to have a good head on her shoulders. Gonna have to carve her out a new quarter, seeing as how we're using our previous Fort Waker's quarters as a tomb now. That shouldn't be a problem though. We'll carve something out next to our Baron's quarters. The first cavern layer is starting to get filled up. Got roads and rooms all over the place now. And it's all just gonna be temporary too. Keep that in mind. Gonna take a look down at the third cavern layer, but first I wanna check out our ballista training room here. Looks to be in full swing actually. Got dwarves manning the catapults, firing rocks fairly aimlessly down to the south there. They're just bouncing off the wall and going down underground. Not bad, not bad. All the dwarves have had a turn so far. Really not sure how long it's gonna take. I think my previous estimate of two years to get these dwarves in a fairly okay position, skill-wise, might have been a little optimistic. Let's we'll just take a look at a random dwarf who's currently training. How about this one right here, Stukos, the Silver Club. Right now they're a dabbling siege operator, which is nothing. That's like at the very beginning. Not excellent. Of course, these things haven't been going for that long, so yeah, it's gonna take some more time. We're patient though, no big deal. Oh dear God. Okay, uh, looks like we had an accident down here in the third cavern layer with our adamantine. Not that sort of accident, just relax, but um, it appears we filled our new coliseum with water somehow. Not great. Oh yes, okay, I guess that makes sense. We dug out this little part down here and apparently got too close to the water. Foolish mistake, foolish, foolish, foolish. Um, I think we've got a plan though. We're gonna have to dig up into this ceiling above where this water's coming in. Looks like the water's coming through these two cracks right here. So yeah, we're gonna have to go up in the ceiling and drop stone down into those cracks and try to fill them up that way. I think it'll work. Gonna take a little bit of doing. Hopefully this thing doesn't get completely filled up. That would not be great. Also, while we're down here, you can check out these rooms that we have planned. We're gonna put a bunch of bedrooms below the Colosseum surroundings, I guess, accessible through hatches in each of the room's ceilings. I think that'll work out pretty well. Of course, I thought the Colosseum would work out pretty well too. And here we are draining of water, so who the hell could say? Never once had they caused harm to their neighbors, yet time and again, they were turned away and forced to wander the wilds of the infinite domains. But now, after such brazen attacks, the hateful leanings of Crimson Trumpets could no longer be tolerated. 
So begins the march of corpses. An army unfeeling, with eyes devoid of life and hearts of dust. They would show the dwarves the meaning of feckless hatred, for they were the necromancers, and their rule was to be eternal. Oh boy, here we go. Here's something. This is a different one than we've faced before. The dead walk, hide while you still can. The necromancers are marching on crimson trumpets. This is very not good. For many reasons, too. Just gonna let them march in here for a second. Um, well, oh, okay, well, it looks like there's more and more of them showing up, too. Yeah, this isn't great. Um, sorry. Yes, this is not great because these are zombies. These are zombies that are attacking. They're zombie goblins. And they all appear to be armed and armored, too. So, essentially, this small group of goblins is... I mean, it, it may not look that bad, sure. It's certainly smaller than the other group of goblins that attacked. No trolls, no big dogs, but these guys have a lot going for them. Zombies can't feel fear, okay? They can't be demoralized in combat. They can't run away. Moreover, they can't feel pain. One of these corpses is going to fight to the end, which, I mean, may not seem like the biggest deal, but it really, really is. You know, our dwarves go after goblins. One good hit from one of their weapons is going to essentially take a goblin down. After you hack them in the arm or something, they're going to be so stunned and weakened by that one attack that they're going to be down on the ground. They may try to run away. They may just drop their weapon. These goblins, or these zombies here, aren't going to do that. On top of that, I mean, these necromancers are hanging around, too, and if the necromancers are near combat when things kick off now, it's not going to work out well for us because the necromancers are going to keep bringing things back to life. Oh, holy hell, you know, I was just thinking, too, we're going to fight up here by our fortress entrance. There are corpses all over the place. How the hell are we going to do this? If those necromancers get up here and start bringing back this goblin siege, then we are totally screwed. That being said, I don't really know what to do. I was planning on just kind of running it like we did with that goblin siege, just keeping all our soldiers down here at the bottom of this ramp, and then when they finally get close enough, we'll just release them all. But if the necromancers are up here, again, we're going to be screwed. Well, there is still a chance the necromancers might just kind of be running around out in the field behind. They tend not to get wrapped up in combat all that much, and they may just leave the area before combat even begins, so that would be excellent. Looking down here in the fortress, yeah, we have our dwarves grouping up right now. Yeah, get into position, you guys. We only have a couple of them here right now. Hopefully those zombies aren't getting too close. I'm all clear for the time being. Actually, we have a gray langer skeleton, I think, ambling about here. I thought it was making its way down. I saw a dwarf for a half second. I don't know why. They just kind of poked their head out. I mean, look at this right here. This gray langer skeleton is taking down one of our llamas. Gray langers are tiny. This llama can't even handle it. Yikes, okay. Oh man, we lost a dwarf already? This idiot. It's one of the recruits after that last attack there. Looks like they met a dog skeleton in this hall here and were taken down by it. Go figure, they didn't have any skill, so it's not too terribly surprising, though it's not great for a couple of reasons. We'll get into that after this fight. All right, we're getting more and more grouped up down here. Come on dwarves, we need all hands on deck. Silver clubs and silver hammers specifically, they're the best against undead. Or at least they're really good about smashing apart corpses so they can't be re-raised by necromancers. Having a look up to the surface, the goblins are moving in. Alongside the necromancer. This is really bad. I was hoping that necromancer would back the hell off. We're gonna be screwed in a second here. Alright, uh, panic mode. Gonna turn the burrow off for just a half second here. Taking all our squads off duty. And for now, we're gonna make a brand new burrow down here. This is the ranger's hall. I wanna get the dwarves all the dwarves down here away from any sort of corpses burrow on let's go dwarves everyone that's right there you go get the hell away from the entrance as you can see there are goblin corpses down here right at our entrance i wasn't even thinking if that necromancer came down here it would start raising them right here Well, that's a fun little cliffhanger right there, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Couldn't really fit that whole situation into the last 30 seconds, though, so... Yeah, we'll just hold off a little bit. That's fine. Relax. 
Now, okay, let's see. This episode, we're going to be talking about some behind-the-scenes things now, of course. It's a real shame that we lost Adder like that. I'm not too thrilled, especially because it was really, you know, like, uh, anticlimactic, I guess. She kind of just went out and was killed pretty immediately. Something really annoying um, is that I couldn't see the combat report. Sometimes, like, the combat report, when you open it up, you, there'll only be a couple lines in there, and I don't know what causes that. But yeah, that, that kept happening. I don't know if they're just it was just because there was so much combat going on or what, but it was like, it just kept clearing for some reason, which I've seen in the past. So yeah, I don't really know what killed her exactly. It was, it was a goblin, clearly, but I don't know the manner or anything. Also, something I, I should probably have addressed by now, Adder was gaining weight. That's why I've been drawing her heavier like that. Just checking her description, um, previously it had said she's very fat for someone so short or something along those lines, which was a change from her original description, which didn't say anything to that effect. And then last episode I checked and it said like something along the lines of she is just, it was an increase of some variety. But yeah, she, so she's been gaining weight. It's good to see. Let's us know that our food problems are non-existent. We've got plenty of food in the fortress. I don't know what causes that exactly, really. Um, like, I, I, I really don't know how in-depth the whole, like, weight-gaining system is in the game. Like, they gain weight. That, that much we can see. But I don't really know, like, how they lose weight, you know? Pretty cool. One of those really neat things about Dwarf Fortress, a mechanic that I haven't really figured out how it works. Uh, yes, and now we have this undead siege here. This really is something, isn't it? The necromancers have never attacked like this, and, like, I really didn't think there'd be much of a threat at all. Even up to the point the necromancer got to, like, the halfway mark of approaching the fortress, I didn't really think it was going to be much of anything, but then I realized that they could bring back all those goblin corpses that are just laying around out there. That could be trouble. Hopefully it won't be trouble now, because, like, the dwarves are far down in the fortress, but I guess we will see, won't we? Yeah. I'm interested to see how this one plays out. I'm sick of doing that whole, like, oh man, this is gonna be a big one, this could be a bad one, oh my god, you know, all these reasons it could be bad, and then it doesn't turn out to be anything. Like, all of the forgotten beasts we've seen so far, they just kind of just die immediately. Sometimes we don't even see them fight at all, looking at that Demetrodon from last episode. I guess that's just how Dwarf Fortress goes, though. Sometimes it could be really bad, like, really, 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 really bad. Or it could just be nothing, and that seems to be the case more often than anything, so. Hey, also another thing that I'm really concerned about with Crimson Trumpets here specifically is that we have not received a caravan in years now. The dwarves no longer show up to our fortress, and I have no clue why. The elves stopped showing up. I, I know I've mentioned this already, but they've not shown up again. And on top of that, we've had no more migrant waves. We haven't had any in a couple years now. This fortress, I'm starting to feel really bad about it. Not good at all. I'm thinking that at some point, like, we're just gonna get beaten down to the point where we only have a couple of dwarves left and we're not gonna be able to do much at all. Um, so I guess we'll be playing it by ear. I'm not interested in this series and like branching out after this fortress here. I don't wanna start an adventurer and like go traveling around. I don't wanna start another fortress that's related to this one. I just wanna play this one fortress and then, you know, wherever it stops, it stops. But the question is, how far should we take it? I mean, with Dwarf Fortress here, you could potentially have a fortress go on forever if you play smart enough. You know, just take a couple of survivor dwarves and lock them up somewhere with some farm or an animal or something, and they could be good for a long time. But, yeah, I don't know what we should do, exactly. Might get interesting, or more interesting, hopefully. <laughs> Guess we'll see. Anyways, my bearded bastards, I hope you enjoyed watching today. I certainly hope to see you next time here in Thestar Zakzul, Crimson Trumpets. And until then, my bearded bastards. 